everybody. What a lively audience. How nice you all are. Thank you, thank you. Uh, yesterday we started our series, 30 Things Everyone Should Know, which we first aired in November. And if you watched, you learned uh, five new things. Well, today you're going to add seven more to your list, and you'll be learning them with our guests, Shania Twain, Melissa Etheridge, Joan Cusack, Patty Loveless, and the very handsome Josh Duhamel. But before we start our 30 things, I have a good thing I want to share with you. Something I learned down in Mustique. It was my first trip down to the very, very southern Caribbean. And my friend Maya Hoffman uh, had a cocktail party. And she introduced me to this amazing snack. So when you choose a coconut, and this is a fresh coconut without the great big husk over it, uh, shake it. Make sure you hear a lot of liquid inside. If it's cracked in any way or it doesn't shake like liquid, can you hear that? Uh, don't buy it. Leave it there. <laughs> so, uh, and then you bring this home. Um, don't keep it for too long either because they do tend to get old and dry out. Uh, and now we want to, you can make a little collar for it like this. And you have to find which eye is soft. There's three eyes in a coconut. Ah, I just found it, Oop, and I'm also getting covered with coconut. Uh, here's the soft eye, and you can just hammer with an, like an ice pick. Oh, hear that? And um, make as big a hole as you can. And what you're gonna do is pour out that delicious coconut water. I love coconut water, and I like to just drink it straight out of the coconut. See all the water coming out? That is just, like the nectar of the gods. It's really delicious. And I'm putting it, notice, in a strainer because it's getting a lot of little pieces of the brown fibrous covering of the coconut. Shake it out. And then take your coconut, put it in a 350 degree oven and bake for 10 minutes. Uh, and when it comes out, it might have a crack in it, which would be very helpful. And you can just bash it open with a hammer. Again, not on your dining room table not on your fine kitchen tile cabinets. Oops, oops, there it goes. And, oh, it's beautiful. What a beautiful, beautiful coconut. And just continue to break it open. The meat should fall out of the shell. Lovely, there, we got half a coconut out. This is perfect because the larger the pieces, the easier it is to grate. So here we have it, and then you take your mandolin. I think I'll take half of this, and right on a mandolin, you slice this beautiful coconut into long slivers. This is exactly what you want. They are, oh, less than a sixteenth of an inch. That's exactly the shape and size of the chips. Or you can, if you don't have a mandolin, and these are inexpensive um, at uh, Asian stores, Asian grocery stores usually have those. You can also use a potato peeler like this, which works very nicely too, as you can see. Spread these on a baking sheet. Now you can leave the skin on, which I did, or you can actually peel the skin off, as Angie did. Uh, in the uh, in Mystique, we had the skin on. They look very beautiful. Just sprinkle them with a little bit of coarse salt. Not a lot, just a little. The natural oil, and we're on parchment paper here in the baking sheet. And um, the oil, the natural oil of the coconut, uh, roasts nicely with that tiny bit of salt. Again, 350 uh, degrees for 10 minutes. And what comes out of the oven? Perfectly golden brown chips like that, and they are the perfect snack. They're great for parties, they're uh, great for sitting there. They're the new popcorn. Let's think of it as the new popcorn. They're very flavorful, they're healthy, and they're a good thing. I, I love them. <laughs> We're starting today's 30 Things with a visit from actress Joan Cusack, who knew nothing about cooking, but was eager to learn. We chose something very basic, cooking fluffy rice. It's number 25 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Watch. Now, rice cookers are very popular, and you have one, you mm -hmm. said. Yeah. So it's very, very easy. Six cups of rice. Now, this is enough rice to just put in your 
on your kitchen counter. The kids can come home and take a handful of it and just eat it. It's so good, wrapped with a yeah. little bit of seaweed. Do you ever do that? Oh, that's a good oh, idea. Oh, yeah, just like the Japanese restaurant. Mm -hmm. and, and you then, can just leave it there exactly. forever, right? And it tells you right inside here exactly how much water. You fill up to the six-cup line. And you turn it on, and that is it. it. When it's done, you just let it rest and eat it all day long. It's fabulous. It is so easy. Let's and see. it doesn't matter, like, if Cook. it's wild rice or brown. And it has a little or... song. <laughs> That's now, the, if you don't have a rice cooker, this is my simple recipe for cooking good rice. And this is one and three quarters cups of water in a small pan, one cup of rice and you drop that into boiling water, one teaspoon, scant, of salt, cover, and cook until all the water's... This is the favorite TV yep. part. Here it is, look. It's done! Now, you're going around the world or somewhere to Europe, and look at that perfect rice. Yes. Steaming hot. Yeah. Simple. That's so cool. Making rice is one of those things you want to do perfectly because it complements so many dishes, so many meals. Next, Melissa Etheridge and I master the perfect omelet. Later, Martha and country singer Patty Loveless start off the morning right with mouth-watering French toast. Stay with us. We're continuing our 30 things everyone should know. And uh, this one is how to make the perfect omelet. It's number 24 on our list of 30 things. I had a lot of fun teaching singer Melissa Etheridge the basics. Take a look. So I like to make a three egg omelet and I'm using a, um, what size is that, seven inch pan, Wes? Eight, eight. Eight inch, eight inch Teflon pan. Uh, now turn up the heat a little bit under your pan to sort of medium. Oh, you're, you're okay. I think I'm it's on. Medium. I'm happy. Okay. And you can use clarified butter or regular butter. Clarified butter just prevents burning. And uh, so I'm going to use a tablespoon, which, uh, let me see, we're missing a tablespoon. Ah. Just about a <laughs> tablespoon of butter. Did you, oh, now you, you left can, me alone. <laughs> yo, you can start beating. You can start beating your eggs. Now, and I'm beating with with either either one. What do you feel like doing? What do you think, people? Yeah. Fancy, fancy thing. Okay. Okay. Why not? So really whisk it up. So you can use this kind of whisk too, or a fork because you don't have to have any fancy tools to make an omelet. When I was um, a new mother, I. Uh, well, when my daughter was about, I think, uh, eight years old, I had a cooking class for children. Omelets were one of the yeah. things I tried to teach all those kids how to make. Kids love to yes. cook. Make sure you get the butter all the way yeah, around. Yeah, that you know? I know, yeah. And then I think we need to put this up a little bit. Okay. There. Turn up the heat, Martha. Oh, okay. <laughs> and so once the heat is up, you can pour your eggs right into the pan. Mm -hmm. And just let them sit there. Just let them sit there for about a, a minute or two. Adjust the heat if you think it's cooking too fast. See, this is about when someone calls me. <laughs> well, get the phone right near the stove. Okay. Now let okay. it sit just for a second. See, now mm -hmm. I let it sit and then I start to shake the pan. And I, so I can see that the omelet is moving. It's always moving. It's not sticking to the pan. And it's important, I think, if you're a beginner omelet maker, to have either a really well-seasoned pan or to have a Teflon yes. non-stick pan. Okay, so then you can start to just draw the omelet back from the sides and keep pouring the liquid egg out to the sides. Ah. And this gets it really fluffy and wrinkly, and which is what you want. Gotcha. And have your plates heated. They should be warm. You can always stick them into the oven where your croissants are crisping. <laughs> or your toast is toasting You're or keeping warm. You're gonna make a girl me yet. Oh, no. <laughs> I love Gruyere omelet, so I have a little bit of gr grated Gruyere, and I'm going to just put yes. in the middle of the omelet here. I'm a huge fan of goat cheese. If you, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I don't yeah. have any goat cheese That's here all right, today. But you know, if you, oh, if I didn't you know that. I should have asked. Goat cheese is actually less acidic, less 
hard on you. Yes, and, and they make very wonderful goat milk. aged goat cheeses and such. That are and just keep moving it around. Here, you're, okay. you now have Am to I start now? drawing or drawing, drawing, drawing or, or it's going to be a disaster. See, pouring like this. No, it's oh, not. Okay. It, it, it cannot be a disaster. Oh, drawing. It that's cannot. drawing. See, that's drawing towards the center and getting all the egg around yeah. the outside. See how it's cooking? Yes. Okay, what do you want to make? What do you want? You want to put anything Ooh, in it? Uh, or? Let's put a tiny little bit of cheese and caviar because okay. it's there. Well, here, no, then you'll have to do. Yeah, that's at the end. This will be a. Yeah. So you can put a little creme fraiche in the middle. Ooh. Just down the middle. And my omelet is actually done. And so you can use your, and this rubber scraper is the greatest tool. Get a heat proof rubber scraper and you just roll the omelet out onto your plate. And there you have. Wow. Okay. The perfect omelet. A little bit there. Yes. Perfect. Okay. And now I'll and give now, you a plate. You give me my heated plate. Mm, yummy, yummy. Yes. And now you can. And now I, what do you I do? can roll it a little. Well, here we can put the caviar on. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh, I don't like omelets that are completely dry. Do you? No, no, I like very moist. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll put a lot of salmon caviar on here. <laughs> mm, be right very on. generous. This is inexpensive and it's very yeah. good for you. So now we're going to roll this side over there. That side over to there. Okay, and I'll turn that off. All right. And just, I just roll. Yeah, just roll it. I'm just scared. Yeah. No, no, don't okay. be. Don't be scared. <laughs> here, like that. Uh huh. And then you. Roll it onto your plate. Here, want to do that? Yeah, no. Hold it. No. <laughs> watch. Watch how I'm doing it. Uh huh. And you just roll, just roll it, it over. over. Okay. Look. Yep. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, some chefs would say that it's too brown. They would like a white one, but I like a little color. What about you? I like the color and then moist on the inside. Yes. Very, very Perfect. nice. Perfect. Okay. Enjoy. And this is the 24th thing that you have to know. <laughs> Try experimenting with different vegetables and cheeses in your omelets. The possibilities are endless. Next, breakfast continues with country singer Patty Loveless. And I'll reveal my tips for making the most amazing French toast. Later, learn how to set a proper table Martha's way. We'll be right back. homemaker, we think you should know how to make really good French toast. That's why it's number 23 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Country singer Patty Loveless loves breakfast as much as I do, so it was great to have her join me in the kitchen. Watch this. So French toast, start with the best bread. Now, I have made it out of French bread, I've made it out of Pullman loaf, but my favorite, because it's so light, is the airy brioche. Airy brioche? Airy brioche. brioche. See how light, feel how light Ooh. this is. It's like oh, light as yes. air. So, so this is the kind, and I get this bread at Balthazar, and uh, it's uh, it's just really light. And when you slice it, it looks like this. And I let it, I slice it the day before, if I remember, so it gets a little crusty on the outside. Yep. So See? it would absorb yeah, so the It'll egg absorb without falling apart because uh, it, it can't can fall, apart fall apart when apart. it's too soft, right? So <laughs> this is the this is what I um, this is how I um, make the the liquid that soaks into the bread. So you All can mix eggs. that up. Okay. Six six eggs. One and a half cups of milk. Now you can use heavy cream. Do you use heavy cream or milk? I use half and half. Half and half, yes. Yeah, so you can use half and half, half and half to make it kind of thick. I know, I love it, I love it, but, but I you, forget but milk it. Is good. <laughs> I use milk, but whole milk. And so a pinch of salt to cut the sugar, two tablespoons of good vanilla. It's all in this, it's all in what you're soaking the bread in. And the bread has to be good, but this is what's really important. A half a teaspoon of cinnamon. I'm gonna put even less than that, because I'm not, I'm, I like cinnamon, but I don't like a lot of cinnamon. Uh, one tablespoon of fresh lemon zest. A quarter of a cup of fresh orange juice. So it's lemon and orange. Oh, this is gonna be good. Oh, it is, it's really, really good. And oh, that's nice. it, doesn't that, sound, doesn't that good? Is, yeah. Didn't I say some sugar? Didn't I tell you sugar, Wes, or Angie? I think I'm, at least a tablespoon of sugar. Okay. Yeah, can I have a tablespoon of sugar? Sure. And then these are the big pans, so you have a pan there too. Mm -hmm. And I think it's heating. Um, I put two tablespoons of butter in the pan and about <clears throat> two tablespoons of canola oil or grapeseed oil, some unflavored oil. Not too, not too, I don't like to have too much, and the nonstick pan really helps. Oh good, yeah, just a little bit of sugar. Like a tablespoon of sugar. Somehow we forgot that in the recipe. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah, and now 
you have it already soaked there. I'll pour this over it and let it soak for about five minutes or so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and then you can put that right in your hot skillet there. Whoops. Mmm, yummy. This is enough for, oh, about eight slices of brioche. Oh, but let eat. it soak it all up. I would eat all of this. Uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And now you can raise the heat a little bit. Um, I think it's the second one in, or yeah, that yeah. one. And then uh, just get it crusty on the outside. And when the, when the um, French toast is done, you can put it in the oven, like a 200 degree oven on a rack, like this. It looks beautiful. Ooh. It hasn't fallen apart. You know, sometimes the French toast falls apart if you soak it too much. I think it's just letting it get a little stale that really helps. And then we're going to taste this. You want to taste? Love to. I love it. I, you can keep that on. Okay. We'll, just, we're gonna, we'll turn it as it gets done. But here, I love this. And I like to serve it with um, oh. maple syrup. Of course. And <laughs> Yes, of course. And uh, that's really the way I like to eat it. You want to have how many slices? One to start? I'll start with one. <laughs> but now you can have powdered sugar on it if you like. You like a little just bit? Just a hint. Okay, just a hint. And butter. Do you put butter on yours? Yes. Oh, of course. There. Thank you. Butter. Ooh. And I can't believe I'm here with Martha Stewart. Oh. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here with Patty <laughs> Loveless. I mean, this is the way it is. This is the way it should be. Breakfast with a fantastic singer there. And I never heat my syrup. Do you heat your syrup? Uh, no, because the French toast is always heated. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, like, I like sort of cold syrup, but yeah. doesn't that look good? Because now that is good. French toast, the best French toast. Don't you wish you had a slice or two of that right now? I certainly do. Next, a simple lesson in setting the table. Later, find out why Martha and hunky actor Josh Demel make the bed their primary focus. Don't go away. Whether you're serving dinner for two or are hosting a dinner party, one thing we thought you should know how to do is set a proper table. That's why it's number 22 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Watch. Even if you've never really entertained before, learning how to do this will make your process of serving dinner smoother, not only for you, but for your guests. And uh, I'm gonna teach you everything you should know, everything you need to know about setting a table. So, um, and, it's, and it's okay to not do it exactly this way. I'm uh, not a stickler for total propriety. You know, all these, this etiquette was really formed when people had somebody to serve for them. And uh, we don't have that anymore. Who has anybody to serve for you? You serve dinner, right? You're the one. But it's very nice, at, especially at holiday time, to sit a nice table. So this is called a charger plate. This is an oversized plate. Now, a lot of people are using these as dinner plates because if you're going to have a big steak, you know, it holds the steak. But this is also called a charger, and it really is a placeholder for the table. And so when you sit down, usually the charger plate, and this is at a formal sitting or setting, uh, the charger plate is holding the place. These used to be made out of silver or glass. Uh, decorated plates are very beautiful usually. This is a beautiful drabware. And then on top of that um, goes the dinner plate. But when you're serving, if you were having, a, if you had a butler serving, the butler would remove this from the right and put the, this plate down from the left around you when you're sitting there. But I'm just going to show it to you on top so that you can see. So that's the dinner plate, usually nine inches or 10 inches. Chargers, usually about 10 or 11 inches. And then uh, if you are serving a soup, the soup should really be served on a dinner plate like this. And uh, again, you know, this is, this is the modern day and lots of us have small kitchens. We don't have room to wash. If you have 10 people over for dinner, that's already 30 plates. <laughs> so it gets kind of, kind of a little oppressive. So, but I want you to know that that's the soup plate. And then the silverware goes from outside in. Whatever is on the outside is what you're gonna use first. So say, um, we should start with the spoon then. We're gonna serve soup first. The soup spoon goes here. And I'm working backwards. 
Then we're going to have a fish course for the second, and this is a fish knife. And see that little notch in the knife? That's for flicking out a bone from a fish that still has bones in it. Uh, that's traditionally, but they're still very nice to use. I, I often use uh, fish, fish service at my table just because I like what they look like. This is the dinner knife, and this is usually a longer knife than a luncheon knife, which is a little bit shorter if it were lunchtime. So that's your dinner knife. Always put the blades facing the plate. It's just polite. Then the dinner fork goes on the inside because that's the last fork you'll be using for eating dinner. The fish fork goes with the fish knife. And then this is the first course or the salad fork. Uh, and then if you're going to have a salad, this can be put right over here. And uh, let me see if I'm, yeah, that's right. And then if you were going to have bread and butter, you can also put a bread and butter plate right here with a little butter knife. But I'm going to use this as my bread and butter plate. And this little bread knife, and usually the monogram is on the right side of the knife, the side that should be facing up. If you have, I buy old silver and I try to get it with an S on it. Uh, because because um, I, I love old silver, so I always get my, my initials. I even found a whole set that had MS, which is so lucky. Um, and, uh, and I use it, but the, the monograms were always monogrammed on the right side. All of these have the monograms on it. Some people, um, and especially the English, put their forks this way, and they have their monograms on the back of the fork, which is also very beautiful. And then you have dessert, and dessert goes like this above the plate. Usually the spoon and then the cake fork or the pie fork, whatever you're gonna be eating, goes up here. And if you like to serve salt and pepper individually, you can put your salt and pepper here, you can put it here, depending on how much room you have on your table. But I like to use these little glass salt uh, cellars and pepper uh, dishes. And I like to, I use just my fingers, but you can have little spoons in there too if you have those little silver spoons. And then the glasses, another question thing, the red wine, is the, usually the fatter, bigger, thinner glass for a nice red burgundy or a Bordeaux. The white wine is generally a little bit taller, a little narrower uh, to, for, the, for the wine. And then the water glass, I usually put there. And this would be for water with, uh, you can have ice in it or not. And then the napkin goes wherever you like. I, I generally like to fold the napkin in something pretty. You can put it here for people to sit down if you're gonna serve the soup or you can just put it here. And there's all kinds of ways to fold napkins and that's a whole other thing. And then this is such a pretty little uh, bouquet. This can be right here above the plate. You can have individual bouquets, but that's basically the simplest way to set a table. And everyone in the audience is going to get uh, from our November issue of Martha Stewart Living Magazine, which we go into detail about how to set your table, we have reprinted the whole thing, the main course, the dessert course, the, oh, if you're still eating, uh, I'll show you that one because that's kind of fun. If you're still eating and you're, you're, you're doing this, you can leave your forks like that. When you're done, you should do that so that people know to take away. Don't clean the table until everybody's finished. Don't rush. Everybody feels rushed if, you, if somebody starts whipping the plates off the table. So let everybody finish. But you're getting this reprint. And this is what I would do if I were you. I would take it home and laminate it. We didn't have time to do that for you, but we would laminate it and just put this in your silverware drawer so that any questions, you just look at this, and it is the basic good way to set a table. So enjoy. I love entertaining, and I think it's so important to do it correctly. Next, I'm going to teach Josh Jamel the right way to make a bed. It's number 21 on our 30 friends. Later, sip tea with Martha. She'll show you how to brew the perfect cup. Stay with us. Josh Jamel told me he never makes his bed because he doesn't know how. So I invited him over for a lesson. And it's number 21 on our list of 30 things everyone should know. Take a look. This is, say, the dirty sheet. Okay. And we have two pillows. These are called shams. Okay. See when they have like a flanged edge like that or something like that? That's already, the pillow's already inside, but these are beautiful damask shams. Okay. Now, all these things come from Kmart, by the way. Oh, really? Yeah. This is part of your, uh, yeah, your line? Yeah, Martha Stewart every day. And so we'll so just keep those. So is his bed, by the way? Yes. They can add a special effect No, that later. doesn't come from Kmart, but it does come from the signature line. Now, do you have one of these on your mattress? No, but it looks good. This is so great. Is this it's, one of yours, too? Uh, no, it isn't, but um, this is actually, uh, actually, we had it at Kmart. I don't know if it's there now, to tell you the truth. Um, is it? 
Joey? No. Um, Joey knows everything. So this is a fitted sheet, and uh, you just take the, this is easy, but the mattress has to be covered first with a mattress cover, then mm -hmm. with a mattress pad like this. And you can get the lamb's wool, or you could get one that's sort of lined with copper. Mm -hmm. That's very, very comfortable. And this is lamb's wool? This is lamb's wool, yeah. Man, I am learning so much here today. Yeah. I'm now not this, kidding the, you. So the start at the bottom and just pull this on. And... Um, Take it all the way up. This is, it's so easy, the fitted sheets. I actually am starting to like fitted sheets because if, if you uh, are making the bed by yourself, it's easier. But, uh, but, you know, actually, it's fun to make the bed with your girlfriend. Do you ever do that? Uh, no. We don't, we don't ever mess the bed up. Oh, you never mess the bed up. Oh, OK. <laughs> That's good to know. <laughs> now, um, I don't know what that means. That means that we're. Good young Catholics. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> now, so the bottom, no, wait a second. The bottom, you pull this okay. down so that you can tuck it under. That's okay. the top sheet. All right. And now just tuck it under. This is if you want to have a top sheet, if you don't, if you want to have a little bit fancier bed. And then do that hospital corner. You told me oh, yeah, that you yeah. took, you took a course. I learned this in course. high school where you do this, right? You take the corner. And pull like, it up. And up here. About a foot, no, about a foot, no, about a foot over. High school keep was going, a while no, ago. keep going. No, <laughs> there, now that's right. Pull that up over right. into a right angle. Right, right where your hand is, pull that up. Yes. Like that. And now what? Now tuck that loose stuff oh, in. Oh, yeah. And then hold your hand on the, on the edge of the bed up mm -hmm. there. Up here? Yeah, and then, yes, that. You didn't forget, see? Wow. You did not forget. <laughs> Now pull this all nicely up to the top. I like to tuck in very little at the bottom because I want a lot of sheet at the top. And so uh -huh. fold this back. I'm tall and my feet always get like, I, I always end up kicking the thing out well, down that, here. That's why, feet... so make it loose. Yeah. That's what, I, I usually just leave it loose. And then here's your um, pillows. When do we get to make cookies? Later, <laughs> later. Oh, the pillows too are important. You buy the pillow like that. These are our grandma pillows from Kmart but always get a pillow protector because uh, you just want to keep this part clean. And people forget that. They just, some people sleep without even putting pillow slips on. So what about when you have the tag on the pillow? Pull, oh, cut it off neatly. But that's illegal. It's not. <laughs> well, I don't understand where that came from. I, ne I just. They said you can get like, punished by law. I know, but that's, that's if it's in the store. Uh. So Josh but has if you a, do leave the tags on, you put the tags in first, otherwise you're going to be sleeping with the tags. But don't leave the sticking. tags in because they're always sort of hitting you in your face and all of that stuff, you know. Then but that if goes you do on. put the tag in first. Exactly. That's what your mother told you, right? And that's just what I learned. Oh, okay. Living on my own. See. Now put your put your pillow slip on. And then now you have a restaurant? Yeah. So do you cook? Uh, Do you ever go out there and not cook? Not very well. I mean, I cook a little bit, but yeah, we have a restaurant back in uh, North Dakota. My buddy basically, when we, li we lived in New York. We, so we I can go out there the and time. have elk and venison and all those good things? Yeah, it's all North Dakota like raised food. Can, like, I, take, can I take some of my venison? You would love the, yeah, you would love the restaurant. I have a lot of venison. <laughs> you, should, you can come and like, cook for us if you want sometime after the restaurant. Oh, really? Oh, good. You can give us a special recipe for the, for the restaurant. I would love that. Now, let's see. Oh, here's I'm our. I'm not kidding. Yeah? <laughs> I will, I will. Okay, so here. This is our juvet. That, the buttons go at the bottom so you don't get those in your face. Pull this sheet back up, and then the duvet goes on there and fluff it up really beautifully. I can't believe I'm making a bed with Martha Stewart. This it's is awesome. so nice, and you're this doing is, a very this... fine job here. Tuck that under nicely. Mm -hmm. And these, I think you will love. Yeah. These are buckwheat pillows. Yeah. They're like little bean bags. They are, and they're very comfortable. If you uh, like to read in bed or watch TV, these are really great to put your uh, under your neck. Mm -hmm. It just molds to your to your body, and they're you, fantastic. You know, they're good like between when you're laying your. Yep, they're know, very good. About. They are. So put these under. Do you ever put pillows between I, I, your knees when you sleep? Yeah, all the time when I sleep on my it's side. Good for the back. Oh yeah. So put that underneath your single pillow. <laughs> yep. And then you put your pretty pillow with the sham. Stewart right here. I don't like to have a lot of pillows on the bed. Like, I don't like 44 pillows no. on the bed because they all end up on the floor and they, they don't serve any purpose. I agree. But this is just about the right thing. This is for my dog, Francesca. Mm. She'll, she'll sleep right on it on the floor. Do you let her sleep on the bed. bed, your dogs? Yeah. You do, you big softy. I am. <laughs> 
I am. But you know what? No, they're they're so cute. I that know. It's hard, to, it's hard to say no. The but... Chow dog would never come on the bed. Now this, all this, by the way, is a five star Kmart Martha Stewart every day. And this is two sheets. The duvet cover is two sheets. We just sewed up together and put the buttons on the bottom. So easy. So uh, you can match, you can mm -hmm. make everything match. And then at the foot of the bed, you can just put something pretty like this. This is our own little damask throw. Instead of having a lot of big, heavy um, um, bed spreads, which I don't like, uh, you can just do this or a cashmere throw, which is so soft, feel that, that's nice. Ooh, like a baby's isn't that, bottom. Isn't that great? <laughs> so you can have that on the bed too, or you can just put it here. And then enjoy your night's mm -hmm. sleep. It's really great. Didn't that bed look inviting? Next country superstar Shania Twain and I serve up the perfect little cheese sandwich. We'll be right back. <laughs> On our list of 30 things everyone should know, making a grilled cheese sandwich is number 20. A delicious grilled cheese sandwich. You only need a few ingredients, but there's still an art to making it. Shania Twain loves grilled cheese, so I was happy to have her help me out. Watch this. Grilled cheese sandwiches, you know, are um, one of the most popular sandwiches in America. I don't know about Canada or you live in Switzerland. What about Switzerland? Yeah, they, it's a coq monsieur there, yes. which is, is a variation, but uh, in Canada, oh, it's a big thing. Yeah. Hot chocolate and uh, grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, hot chocolate and grilled cheese. Oh, yeah, oh. definitely. We, we always have tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwiches. Oh, no, that's a great one. You yeah. dip the grilled cheese yeah. in the tomato soup. Yeah, yeah that's, 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 that's good really one. good. So I like to use a ciabatta. This is a, a beautiful bread, and it's made at the Sullivan Street Bakery. But you can, if you have a good bakery nearby that makes this kind of ciabatta, um, and I cut off the top. And you can slice some tomatoes for me, not, okay. not too thick and not no. too thin. Okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> just, just right. I'm nervous. <laughs> Shania Twain should not be nervous. You are a very good cook, I understand. You like to cook. I love to cook, but yeah. it's such an individual thing. I actually don't even like people helping me in the kitchen. You don't? No, you, they never get it right. Oh, oh see? <laughs> it's like, okay, well, you just have to do it yourself. I'm, I'm very That's happy that I'm you're nervous. helping me. Oh, well, just. Because I figure, you know, she said not too thin, not too thick. I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how thick or thin because grilled cheese and tomatoes, I think, are just great together. I've never done. And if it you with if you tomato. like bacon, you can stick a piece of bacon in. I don't like to put ham in my grilled cheese sandwiches, and I don't like to put any meat. Are you a vegetarian? I am. But yeah. isn't it too greasy when you put bacon? Uh, yeah, I just don't. I just don't care to have that. Now, don't throw the inside away. Save this. You can toast this. You can make it into mm. breadcrumbs. And then I always like to butter a little bit. Do you like to butter on your sandwiches? Well, a little we, tiny a bit. Grill, we do inside out grilled cheese sandwiches in Canada. You butter the outside. Yes. You put that in the pan. Then you put the, 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 the cheese on. Then you put another outside buttered piece of bread. Mm hmm. And that's, and that's, that's how you do it. That's yeah. the grilled cheese. I put, but I always, this is totally I always like to, to put a little bit inside. Too. And we use cheddar. Oh, you use cheddar. Yes, I like cheddar too. You can use, I'm using a Swiss or a Gruyere. You can use Emmental or you can use um, cheddar, sharp cheddar or you can mix, mild mix. cheddar. Yeah. I like mixing too. And then I like to put Jesus. on the tomato. Mm. And uh, oh, it's so good. It's gonna be good. Yeah, it's a, it's, a, <laughs> it's a beautiful sandwich. And I'm cooking it in a grill pan like this on the stove. Uh, if you have a griddle, you can do it on the griddle. And then you top it with Another just a tad, I just a tad for flavor of butter, not too much on the inside. Is that inside. salted butter? Uh, no, I always use unsalted, unsalted butter. See, butter. I'm adding, add I'm yourself. adding a little salt yeah. to the tomatoes and a little bit of black pepper. Now, if you all like too, you can put a little bit of basil in your sandwich, then cover. Mm. That, that's then, kind of like Italian. It seems Italian. It's like a panini. Sort of. yeah, yeah, this yeah. is sort of panini, panini like, and then um, a little bit of butter on the outside. This is not for the 30-day diet kind of <laughs> sandwich, but you just put that in to your griddle and a little bit of butter on the top. And then just weight it down with another skillet. Make sure the bottom's clean, no rust, and just put that on top. That's a good idea. Yeah. Oh, I like that. And so what, how do you, so you use cheddar and what else do you do? What kind of use bread? Use cheddar, um, any kind of bread you want. Brown bread's really good, whole grain bread's really good. Um, but I always, what I do is I put the grilled cheese in with the cheese and the underside buttered heavier than that. Oh, more, yes. And then I put a lid on the pan so the cheese starts to melt. Now this, this works about the same way. And then, yeah, exactly. And then let that 
get marked there. Just let that stay. Well, but I, I leave it open. Oh. I put the lid, I leave it open, oh. put the lid, let the cheese start to melt. Then I put the second oh. slice on. Oh, that's nice. Because then the second slice sticks to the cheese. But the, we have some that are already made and just kept warm in the oven. And this is what they oh, look like yummy. when they come out. They're real kind of, they're really kind of pretty. And that one's with ha ham? Oh, yeah. No, no, that has basil. Mm. So this is the, one of the 30 things that you really should know how to make. And you this can cut it. This is a gourmet grilled cheese sandwich. Well, it's, yeah, but it's what, uh, kids love this. When they come home from school and they're really, really hungry, it's just one of those 30 things. Simple to prepare and so delicious. Next, how to brew the perfect cup of tea. Stay with us. One of the 30 things we think would make life a little bit nicer is number 19, how to brew the perfect cup of tea. Take a look. For years, I made only rose puchong tea from Fortnum & Mason. I just loved rose puchong tea, and I drank it straight, no sugar, uh, sometimes a little bit of milk, sometimes lemon, but it was so delicious. Now I'm into Darjeeling tea. Who knows why, but I like the taste. Sometimes you want that smoky tea of an Earl Grey, uh, but oftentimes, too, nowadays, I like green tea because it's so good for you. But in fact, all tea is really good for you, it seems. And so, how to make the perfect pot. First of all, warm your pot, very important. When you fill your tea kettle and start to boil your water, take cold water from the tap, fill your tea kettle fresh every time, boil, bring to a raging boil, and always fill the pot up to the top because you're never gonna have enough water. Not after you do the few little steps that you have to do. So the pot is boiling hot. It has been filled with steaming water. Just pour that out and never add tea to a cold pot. It's really important. Now, I like weak tea. Um, some people put a teaspoon of tea per cup. I put whatever I can hold in my five fingers into the pot, that's it. Uh, because I like weak tea. So, uh, but remember, you can make it strong or weak. My English friends just always go, oh, she's at it again. So uh, fill your pot as full as you think you're going to need and Another pet peeve in our family, cold cups. So I have filled these cups with steaming hot water. So they're ready to use. Same for coffee, always heat your cups if you can. You know in the, in the uh, cappuccino stores where you're going into the cafe, all the cups are always up on top of the cappuccino maker because it tastes better if it's really hot. So there, and then strain your tea right into your cup. If you want the weak tea, which I like, I take the first cup always. I don't even mind the tea leaves in the cup. I don't mind at all. And um, this is a little, but if you want to wait a little bit and have English tea, you can put your milk into the hot cup first and then add your tea. And it's fun to set it out like this. It's fun to bring it to the table. It's fun to be ladylike in your service of tea, even if you're a guy. And there you have what I think is the perfect cup of steaming hot tea. I could definitely go for a cup of tea right now. Nothing's more soothing. And here's a good sweet thing to go with your tea. Flowers made of sugar. They're very easy to make. And you can make them in different colors. I just love this. It's so easy. Take some sugar. And um, one cup is enough, really, for quite a few. Add two teaspoons of water and stir. What you really want to do is moisten every granule of sugar. And it takes a little while to get it all moistened. You can color this just a little bit with a tiny drop of green or pink. Vegetable food coloring, that is. Okay, so once you have it moistened, you can get these pretty little candy molds uh, at the cake decorating store, the craft store. And uh, you can, these come in all different sizes, as you can see, and they're pretty that way. And just press the sugar into the mold. And you can even it out with the back of an offset spatula. Now, every kitchen should have one of these. Notice it's a bent spatula. 
Very good for spreading soft butter on bread, for spreading sugar into molds like this. And go, keep going until you fill all the little indentations. When they dry, they just pop right out like this. And they look like little sugar cubes, only they're a sugar shape in the shape of a flower. For your tea, a very pretty good thing. Thanks so much for joining us. See you tomorrow with just Cynthia Nixon, Red Savant, and Roger Bark. And more things to learn. Have a great day, everybody.